all of America and all of the world is a buzz about Patricia Arquette's Oscar speech talking about equal pay for women. Well, I'm here to, for you to know that that was just a smokescreen to deflect from the issue of race. You have to understand how the white liberal operates. And what he does to keep from talking about the issue of race is first he sends out his buffer Negroes like David Carroll talks about and that was on display with your John Legend and his little tears and you know this buck dancing minstrels on there um, doing his tears and then you had these other Negroes out there talking about um, other silliness and then they, 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 and then after that set up here comes the white woman and a lot of people don't understand is that this is the one-two punch to keep from talking about race. They, they, after they send out their buffer Negroes, they send out their white woman. And they use their white woman to deflect you from talking about race because then it becomes an issue of gender. And you have to understand how the white liberal operates and how white supremacy operates. They use the tactic of divide and conquer in order to control, in order to control the masses. And this is what we saw on display with Patricia Arquette's Oscar speech, a plan to divide and conquer, um, you know, the black community. So while everybody's talking about gender, nobody's focused on the issue of race. And the issue of race was really, it's never been dealt with um, after the Selma Oscar snub. I mean, it was clearly on display, you know, Hollywood was in, you know, try to do the fix it mode, but nobody really wants to deal with race I mean when you really look at Hollywood and they're talking about equal pay white women have been been paid very well in Hollywood for the last 40 years I can go back as far as Suzanne Somers Kate Jackson um, back in the 70s and in the 80s they were paid very well I mean Kate Jackson had a six million dollar a year contract um, with CBS and now she was the highest paid woman at CBS back in the 80s and this was after Charlie's Angels um, white women have been getting paid very well for a good long time and I can go even back to as far as two and I can go further on um, timeline talking about Angelina Jolie um, she's paid on par with men um, she's paid 20 million a picture and I can also talk about Sarah Jessica Parker who has made hundreds of millions of dollars on the Sex and the City series because she's an executive producer on that series. And white women, again, have been paid very well for a good long time. And this is why I say that the equal pay thing is a smokescreen because these white women in Hollywood are paid very well. And the whole thing is, that's, that's a bunch of nonsense. I mean, in contrast, I mean, your black actress who is at the bottom of the ladder, of the, of the ladder in Hollywood, is paid usually 50 to 75 percent less, usually 75 percent less than your white actress and so all this talk about equal pay is a bunch of nonsense and plus the Hollywood system you know you get paid in proportion to how much money you make at the box office so your white actress usually makes way more money than most people do because she can open movies um, Whereas your black actress, she just has to take the scraps. Like in the case of, I can go and talk about, you know, the Halle Berry Catwoman situation. You know, people think that she was paid $15 million. She was paid at the bottom of the barrel compared to the A-list white women who passed in the role, like Michelle Pfeiffer, um, Ashley Judd, again, Angelina Jolie. They came to Halle Berry dead last. They don't come to the, to the black woman until the last minute when it comes, you know, in Hollywood to... For a role, they after the white women pass, they give it to the black woman. And while everybody's talking about you know this this gender issue, talking about um you know equal pay, this is a deflection again. This has nothing to do with anything except to use for the um white liberals to use this as a as a way to keep people from talking about race and really dealing with race. So again, after they send out the buffer negroes, they send out the feminist, the white woman. And if you try to challenge this feminist, usually what happens is she launches into the shaming tactics. And what she's going to say is, you're bitter, you're a racist, you're a sexist. And then what they, want, they, what they expect people to do is fall back. And this is, this is a tactic that they use. It's like, see, it's like a, 
like a boxer he does you know his combination and if you're not smart you duck the one punch and then you fall into you fall into the other but the really good boxer he's gonna back away he's gonna see the combination and then go for another type of attack and this is the big problem with black people is that a lot of us fall for the equal pay things what they're gonna do is that they divide the black man and the black woman on race while you're sitting there going back into gender war mode and you turn and you start fighting each other instead of you know uniting and working together to deal with the issue of race and deal with the true issue of diversity when it comes to images and film and more importantly the business side of Hollywood which really is you know getting black films distributed getting black films greenlit and getting black executives on board and this is where you know most black people aren't really paying attention this is why this is what's gonna happen what they expect people to do is going to this big, you know, debate talking about gender and, you know, e e equal pay and all this stuff. When I look at it this way, you know, your white woman has been, like your Patricia Arquette, has been paid very well for a very long time, for over 40 years. Um, your white woman has benefited the most from affirmative action. And your white woman can get a job faster, and even your black woman can get a job faster than a black man. So... All of that talk was just nonsense, and it really was, you know, a true deflection to keep us from talking about the issue of race and talking about, you know, true diversity in Hollywood. Because over the last 15 years, we've had the biggest minstrel show going on when it comes to black entertainment. And a lot of it, you know, is due to these Uncle Toms, you know, these buck dancing Uncle Toms like Lee Daniels or Tyler Perry, and I, I even go as far as your Oprah Winfrey's and your Shonda Rhimes producing this content and getting the approval of white liberals. And they're doing it, you know, at the expense of black people. And this deflection, when you really look at it, is at the expense of, ironically, you know, black women. Because, again, as I stated before in the All About Maryland video, um, your black woman is the least paid actress. She's, the, she's at the bottom and she's the least to benefit from any sort of so-called equal pay because again when white when women to white women talk about equal pay for women we're talking about equal pay for white women and that's been going on for a good you know 35 40 years i mean again i go back to your kate jackson who was the highest one of the highest paid actresses at cbs at one time i go back to your susan summers um again another high paid white actress and I go back, I can go back, you know, back and forth down the spectrum. Very well paid. White actresses are very well paid for their own time. And, they're, and they, they often get very good compensation. And in contrast, you know, to your Angela Bassett's or your, you know, your Sally Richardson's or your um, Vanessa Williams, they don't get paid half as much as your white actress. And they're just as good, they're just as good, or I even say, a better performer than some of these white chicks and they don't even get half the compensation for their work they don't get you know half the quality scripts to perform in and they don't get access to those scripts and this is something you know this is why I say black people have to keep it focused on race because you know the gender thing is not the problem it's really has to do with race in Hollywood and we really need to keep the discussion focused on race because as long as white supremacy keeps these images up here, as long as they keep things um, not focused on race, we're going to have this minstrel show going on for 15 for the next 15, 20 years. And we're not going to re get any real diversity or, you know, a diverse array of stories on screen. Or we're, we're not even going to get, you know, to the table to even talk about, you know, the real issue of race. We're not really going to be dealing with, you know, how black people are presented and portrayed. Um, when it comes to Hollywood, because I found the whole thing to be just totally disingenuous because you're sitting there talking about equal pay for women, yet Hollywood, with a black female president as the head of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, decides to snub the movie Selma and snub the director Ava DuVernier, who's clearly come out, you know, in a position that is completely opposite of white liberals. In Hollywood and their you know monolithic view of the black experience and they use this again deflection to keep you from 
thinking about the issue of race. I mean, Hollywood has, is the least diverse, one of the least diverse places in America when it comes down to the business side. The only place more or less diverse is the comic book industry, which is 95% white and 95% male, all the way here in 2015. And, you know, the film industry does not want images of black people, and they don't want black people behind the camera preventing, you know, different images outside of what they fits their narrative. They don't want, you know, black people writing screenplays that don't fit the narrative. And they use smoke screens to keep people from, you know, presenting views that don't fit the narrative. I mean, the movie Selma, as, as from what I've heard, does not fit the narrative of the white liberals in Hollywood. That's one of the reasons why it got snubbed. Um, I'm not saying it's a great film, but because it's the same story all the time, but, you know, it presented a different view than that of the white liberal, and that's probably one of the reasons why it got snubbed. And also, you know, black black filmmakers, they really, they don't really, the Academy doesn't even want to talk to them unless something, you know, fits that narrative. Um, you know, the poor, miserable black people who need this great white savior, or the poor, miserable black people who fall down and die. They don't really, that's, that's, that's the type of stories that they like, these slave movies, you know, these menstrual movies, um, these poor, miserable, downtrodden people. This is what they give Oscars for, and this is, this is, they, t and then, and they then when you try to challenge these views, you know, like most, like, um, most intelligent, self-aware black people try to challenge these views, then they come out, you know, with your buffer Negroes, like your John Legend, with his tears, and then when that, that's a setup, you know, for your white woman to come in, and your white woman is used to shut down all debate, because she's going to come in and talk about this equal pay deflection, and then what's going to happen is everybody's going to, black people are going to get divided by gender, and Americans are going to get divided by gender, and then we're going to have a gender war where people argue back and forth, and that shuts down all discussion, you know, on race, and... I just want people to, you know, get some critical thinking about this and really take a look at that big picture. Because a lot of times when it comes down to entertainment industry, a lot of people, they don't take a look at that big picture. They're only looking at the small part of it. And you have, as a, as a person who understands the entertainment industry, I try to get people to understand that big picture and how it operates and how people do things in the long term to, you know, keep people from talking about the real issue, which is race in America, uh, race in the entertainment industry, um, and this topic, that is, because the real issue is race, and because the images of black people we've had over the last 15 years, again, it's been a minstrel show, it's been coon and buffoon, and we have not had any balance and the whole Selma Oscar snub should have been is is, is is the opportunity to really talk about true diversity in African American film something that presenting films that don't fit the narrative of this white liberal um, and his cronies because the white liberal again he's he's the he's another part of white supremacy and he really want he talks about tolerance and acceptance but he, when it comes down to people of other races especially black people he wants tolerance and acceptance on his terms. So his freedom is not free. So we don't get to see different views of the black experience when it comes to film. We only get to see his view of black people. And that's what he really wants to present to people. Um, he does not want to talk about you know race on a constructive level. He doesn't want to talk about you know, talking about different views or telling different stories of the black experience. Um, you know, talking about, again, like the films I've talked about, you know, that should be made, like your movie about your black Wall Street, movie about your black owned business, movie about what the Pullman Porters really had to go through because they were a big component of the black middle class and building a black middle class. Um, you know, talking about black westerns and then talking about, you know, really us getting a real black fantasy or science fiction movie made from a black writer and a black production team, they don't want to talk about this stuff and they don't want to get it greenlit because um, often the excuse is that 
it, this stuff won't make any money, it's not bankable. What it is is that they fear competition. And that's why they, again, bring out their buffer Negroes and they bring out their white women. Because they fear true competition, you know, because if Patricia Arquette had to deal with an equal pay situation where she and a black woman were being paid the same, I guarantee you her views and her rhetoric would be completely different. Um, Because most of these feminists, as I've always said, are racist. They're white supremacists. They're the cheerleaders of white supremacy and... You think that they're on the side of black people, but they're not on the side of black people. This white woman, again, she is walking lockstep, walking lockstep with the other racist white liberals in Hollywood. But, you know, you can't explain things to black people most times because they're, you know, they fell for the smokescreen talking about equal pay. And then they heard Barack Obama talking about equal pay. Again, we've had equal pay for white women for, you know, a good... 30, 40 years now. Again, they were the biggest beneficiaries of affirmative action. A white woman can get a job faster than a black man or a black woman. But the but the whole thing is, because I've seen this, you know, I was at a civil service interview and I went all the way out to Brooklyn to go for the civil service interview. And this white woman got hired within five seconds. She walks in, she does the interview, she's hired automatically. Um, I've been to the civil service interviews and I've watched black women get jobs faster than a black man myself. I've watched Hispanic men and Hispanic women get jobs before I can get a job. So all of this talk about, you know, gender means nothing because it truly is about race. And we really need to keep the discussion focused on this. And people need to, you know, check these buffer Negroes and let them know you're not going to deflect the topic and let these white women know you're not going to deflect from the issue of race because the images that people see of black people have a direct impact on how people are socialized to behave. And when you look at the images of black people over the last 15, 25 years, this is why we have your soft, weak, lame, effeminate black males running around out here. Um, And this is why we have your dysfunctional black woman, you know, because she's the poster child, you know, your scandals and your monsters. Well, this is why we have this, you know, debauchery going on right now in society. Because this is what, these are the images they want to produce. These are the images white supremacy wants to produce. And these are the images, you know, your Uncle Toms want to promote. Because they want to stay on top and stay in their top shelf position. This is, this is what they want to do. This is why we have black men in dresses. Um... In the fashion industry, see, white supremacy does not want an equal playing field. They don't really want equal. Again, when you hear a white woman talking about equal pay, she's talking about herself. And she's not talking about your black woman. Because as I said in the All About Maryland video, your black woman is the least paid in Hollywood right now. She has the least opportunity um, in Hollywood right now. And that's not just due to race. That's also due to bankability. Um, you know, your black females, the film a black woman is in, you know, her budget is only like eight, maybe $16 million tops and $16 million is for your A-list black woman, like your Halle Berry's or, you know, people like that. They get, they get the low end of everything and their salaries are always on the low end. Whereas your Angelina Jolie's and your Sarah Jessica Parker's and your Julia Roberts, these women were making 15, $20 million way back in the nineties. Um, and they were also, some of them were smart enough, you know, to get percentages of the box office, so they made even more money on top of it. Um, you just have to understand the business side of the entertainment. A lot of people don't understand the business side of entertainment, that's why they're getting in, that's why they're, you know, getting in this whole equal pay thing and this emotional smokescreen, and they're not focused on the business side of Hollywood. I understand the business side of Hollywood, I've been studying it for years, I've been, you know, because I have, as a, as a writer and a screenwriter, I have to know the business side of it. And I can pretty much explain this, you know, to people so they don't wind up getting made a fool of or believing all of this rhetoric. I want them to understand that, again, this issue has to do with race. Um, and I keep repeating that it has to do with race because when it comes down to blacks in, in, in entertainment industry, in the in film industry, they're not getting, you know, 
an equal cut. And what white supremacists in Hollywood want to do is keep black people from getting an equal cut and presenting those balanced images of black people on screen. Because if you start presenting, you know, balanced images of black people on screen, it's going to change the whole perception of black people in the United States and even the world. Because then instead of us seeing, you know, this black man as this criminal, we start seeing him as a person. And instead of us seeing him as a minstrel and a coon, we start seeing him as a person with feelings and thoughts and emotions just like ours. And he starts to become human. And that's something that white supremacy doesn't want us to believe. Now, they have known this to be true even before the Civil War that black people were human. But they don't want this message to come out. Because if I go into depth, I really need to do that video about the Civil War because... Um, that was a way of life for a lot. Racism was a way of life for a lot of people in the South. Um, but the world was changing even then. Because one of the reasons, the, all the reasons for the Civil War were not about freeing slaves or all this other silly stuff. What it really was was about economics and competition because, you know, cotton and all these other crops, they had become obsolete because the British, because the, the U.S. was the number one importer of cotton and other, other products, tobacco, and the English and the French were able to finally go to India because the reason why America was formed again was because they wanted a route to India and the British got that route to India they colonized India and they didn't need the US anymore and plus we had this industrial revolution going on and yeah I know I'm going off topic but I really want people to understand that the real reasons for the Civil War had nothing to do with race um, they all had to do with economics um, and this is what that was about. And then, you know, you had people in the South who still wanted to hold on to racism. And then you had people in the North who still wanted to hold on to racism. And this is something that they wanted to keep maintaining. But they knew the truth was that, you know, black people were human. The slave, the sl and, yeah, I know I'm talking about slavery, but I'm talking about it from a different perspective. And this is one of the roots of it, you know, the roots of racism and the roots of white supremacy, because white supremacy, the whole idea of white supremacy is the idea that white people are superior, that white people are better, and that they are destined to control the earth. And Hollywood has a big, big hand in perpetuating that image. That's the whole point of, you know, the entertainment industry here in America is perpetuating the concept of white supremacy and white superiority. Um, this is why they don't want diversity in film. They don't want to show you these images of black people and get true diversity on screen. Because if we start seeing black people on the same level on a regular basis, again, it's going to change people's perception of black people. And it's going to change their views. And the white liberals in Hollywood don't want those views of black people to change. What they want to do is they want to maintain the status quo. Because the status quo benefits them and it benefits especially this white woman this white woman um she does not want that image of that black woman to be equal to hers because she fears competition from that black woman because as long as she's the ideal standard of beauty then every woman on the planet continues to chase her but when the minute you start putting that black woman you know beautiful brown skinned black woman as the equal of your white woman then her value diminishes and that's one of the things that they don't want to happen. So they'll come out here talking about equal pay when we pretty much know, if you anybody who's in the entertainment game, again, I, I'm going to keep saying it again, the black woman is the least paid in all of Hollywood. I mean, if we look at your Oscar, black, black Oscar winner, black female Oscar winners, like your Halle Berry's, your Monique's, um, your Octavia Spencer's, none of them are making the money that many of the white actresses are making right now. Uh, and even your top with A-list black women, none of them have ever made the money that your A-list white women have made. So all of this talk about equal pay, again, just a smoke screen, just a way to play this, just a way to pit people on an emotional level so they can get into this gender war game and start going back and forth with each other instead of uniting. Because black people, as I see it, you know, we really need to start getting united and start talking about race and how we are presented and represented, how our image is presented and represented 
here in America because we're not looking good right now. I mean, I look again as a guy who studied the entertainment industry since he was seven years old. Uh, this is the worst it's been, as I'd say, since the 1930s. I have not seen, you know, minstrel images like this, like in shows like Scandal and Empire and all these Lee Daniels and Tyler Perry movies. Until I, uh, I haven't seen images like this until I go out and watch one of these classic Charlie Chan movies or I watch one of these old 1930s, 1940s movies with these mammies and these coons and these other, you know, dysfunctional Negro images in them. And they're, they're, these images today are just like those. And that's what I'm seeing on a regular basis. Um, and we're not really discussing or dealing with that issue and we don't look at things like, you know, your Selma Oscar snub um, and how it relates to, you know, true diversity in film because we're not really getting diversity in film because, again, Ava DuVernay is a brilliant director. If you watch her film, I Will Follow, or you watch one of her other films, you see how talented she is. But she's for, she, was, she had to do one of these, you know, um, civil rights movies, period civil rights movies in order to get noticed by Hollywood. And that's the only way she could probably get the funding from Oprah Winfrey and Brad Pitt, because it fits, again, this type of film fits that white liberal narrative. And she made it in her own view, and she made it from her own perspective, because she doesn't paint Lyndon Johnson as a hero. She doesn't, you know, follow the narrative of the white liberal. And again, that's one of the reasons why the film was snubbed, because it didn't fit the narrative of the white liberal or fit his view. Again, they wanted to snub and prevent true diversity from coming through these different viewpoints and you know an objective view they really don't want those type of views coming through and they really even though again she, even though she made the film and it fit their narrative and it was it, on the surface it fit the narrative when they began looking at the film they began to realize it didn't fit their narrative and what the white liberal wants you to do he wants everything to fit his narrative you know he wants those we shall overcome we will clean up we can clean up these negroes you know make this savage just like us. Those are the films that get Oscars. Same thing with Steve McQueen, another great director, but he didn't get noticed until he fit the narrative of the white liberal. And there are different views out there, but they're being suppressed by Hollywood. And then when you try to challenge those views, they come out again with your buffer Negroes, like your John Legend with his tears, or they come out with your Patricia Arquette, you know, your white woman, who will just is just used to shut down all debate and present people from really talking about the issue of race because again as David Carroll sometimes says the white liberal makes his money on race he makes his money on baiting race um you know and he sits he sleeps on a stack of money on black people so I've seen it and you know in the business side of Hollywood and I know it to be true that they this is how the white liberal makes his money by exploiting black people and the sad part is the black people don't see how they're being taken advantage of and they don't see how they're being played you know by these hustlers you know on both ends of the spectrum they don't see that none of these people really want diversity in in the entertainment business they really don't want you to really start talking about you know race and presenting these different views and they really don't want to see any view but the one view of black people which is this poor miserable black person who is downtrodden um, and needs the help of a great white savior or these you know these emasculated negro males um, even they may, they may be in positions of power but they really have no masculine energy I mean when it comes down to images of black people they all have to fit a narrative of a white liberal and that really prevents us from getting that bigger picture of the black experience and that bigger picture of black culture and again I just really want black people to start thinking about you know what's presented to them and I want them to look at this um, a, a, from a different perspective because again as long as you're focused on gender you really can't deal with race because this is one of the things that the liberal uses. This is the one white supremacy uses. They, they use a divide and conquer approach to keep black people from being united and really talking about the issues that matter. Because as long as the black man is fighting the black woman, the white man and the white woman are benefiting 
at their expense selling them guns and butter. And this is how white supremacy has made its money throughout the years. They What they do is they send, they put one side against another side, and then they sell both sides guns and butter. That's all I have to say for this video. You know, just again, take a look at things because it's not about equal pay. It is about equal opportunity. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.